we never fail Your word we come to pass Your word must surely stand Cause you are God, you're not a man Battle against witches, sorcerers, and false prophets. Mm -hmm. Amen. You may think that Satan is not there in that in this heading, but Satan is their father. So as uh, we deal with this one, we are going to see many things. Uh -huh. Battle against witches. Yes. Every man of God fought witches, sorcerers, and uh, false prophets. I was really thinking about something. What happened that Jesus did not have any witch to fight? Did you think that Jesus did not face any witch? For example, Moses faced the witches, sorcerers. But Jesus did not have any witch to contend with. There were so many of them, millions of them. But now that Jesus overcame Satan, does he need to fight any witch? <laughs> During the temptation of Jesus, who came? Satan, Satan. Satan came. Their father. Their father came. <laughs> yes. And Jesus fixed Satan. Yes. If you fight a higher battle, should you fight a lower one? Oh my God. Should you fight a lower one? No. There is no need of fighting a small battle if you have already overcome yeah. a bigger battle. So Jesus overcoming Satan did not have to did not have to fight uh, witches. They they were automatically defeated. Uh -huh. They were automatically defeated. Uh -huh. There are some battles you fight in life and you don't have to fight a lower ones. Praise God. Uh -huh. Millions and millions of witches during Jesus' time, they did not show up. Who showed up? Satan. Number two, who showed up? Religion. Religion. Uh -huh. Religion fought Jesus and Jesus contended with religion. We don't see Jesus fighting witches anywhere, but we see Jesus contending with false prophets, with religion. So religion is another high level of mountain that we must contend with and overcome. My God. Religion. So high priest came and arrested Jesus. Jesus was arrested by the church. Jesus was beaten by the church. Jesus was executed by the church. Jesus was crucified as the church was watching. Wow. When Jesus resurrected, he went again to the church. And he empowered the church to, to fight against religion. So, these are high level demonic authors that are fighting the church. One of them, of course, is Satan. Another one is religion. You must come out of religion. Yeah. Come out of religion. Religion is dangerous. Therefore, Jesus did not fight witches, but he had religion to contend with. Religion is dangerous. Oh religion. Praise God. Amen. Paul fought witches. Peter fought witches. Joshua fought witches and wizards. Moses, Moses fought witches. Yeah. Everywhere, Abraham ran away from witches. Like Abraham it. ran away from, from his father, who was a witch. His father, the father of our father of faith, his dad was an idolater. He was a Freemason. Terah was a Freemason. That's why God said to Abraham, leave your people, leave your kindred, and go to a place I will show you where there are no people worshippers, so that I can bless you. So there are some things you can, you have to leave and go to another land where Jesus will show you. Then, there you will be able to fight and contend and overcome. Praise God. Amen. Wow. You can just write Matthew chapter 10 verse 1. The Bible says, And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases. So already Jesus has given us power against witches. Amen. <laughs> you have the power against which you call it. Uh -huh. Then no witch should overcome you at Amen. all. At Amen. all. Praise God. Amen. Now, in Acts chapter 8, we will read about Evangelist Philip. Uh -huh. In Acts chapter 8, 
as we continue to read, we will, we will see Apostle Peter there. We will see why Peter came. We, we need to see why did Peter, why was Peter introduced in Acts chapter 8 to give reinforcement for evangelist Philip. We will see. And then in Acts chapter 16, which we will read also, we see Apostle Paul. The three of them fighting witches. And they are going to give us a formula of fighting the devil and witches. And we are also going to see ten qualities or ten characteristics of a, of let me see of a sorcerer, of a witch, of a prophet. We are going to see right ten of them. How, how are you able to know that somebody is a witch? Praise God. Amen. Let's start off in Acts chapter eight, verses nine. Amen. Father, may you bless this word. And as I teach you, I want after this we pray against a witch somewhere. Amen. Yeah. As I pray, I, I pray as I speak, your eyes will be open so that you see someone you have not been thinking is a witch. I didn't know that person is a witch. By the message I will preach, may your eyes be open. Ah, so someone did somewhere is a witch, is a sorcerer, is a knockout, is a false prophet. May God open your eyes as I preach. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. But in verse 9. But there was a certain man called Simeon or Simon which before time in the same city used the sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one, something powerful. Witches possess Christian names. Wow. They don't possess, um, they don't call themselves a very bad name so that you can suspect them. They have a Christian name. His name is Simon. Do you know somebody else called Simon? <laughs> Do you know somebody else called Simon? Oh my God. Do you know somebody else in the Bible called Simon? Yes. Who is that? Simon Peter. Simon Peter. <laughs> Simon the Siren. <laughs> so witches do not carry different unique names that you may think that this is a bad man. No, they carry Christian names, unfortunately. Let's keep reading and see. Verse 10. To whom they all give heed. From the least to the greatest, he's saying, this man is the great power of God. Wow. We are going to see ten characteristics. But keep reading with me. I'll give the points later. Just keep reading. Don't write. I'll tell you when to write. Something else we see in verses 10 is that they carry some funny titles. They give themselves funny titles. Yeah. This man is called, is the great power of God. <laughs> So witches carry some funny titles. Uh, they can call themselves the I. They can call themselves the ego. <laughs> they can be witches. <laughs> so as far as their name, their name is Simon, but there is another funny name they carry. This one, they call him the great power of God. <laughs> Your majesty. Yeah. Yeah. Princess. They carry some funny names. Because when they worship the devil, the devil gives them another name. But the Simeon is to confuse the church. It's to confuse the children of God. Wow. So that other name they call themselves is the title they are known with in the kingdom of hell. They all carry some funny, funny titles. This man is the great power of God. Wow. I am so shocked that... Bonke is only called evangelist. Yeah. <laughs> or Roberts is only called the Reverend. Or Roberts. John G. Ray was actually a brother. <laughs> Bill Graham actually is just an evangelist. The only name they have is their name in the Bible. Yeah, funny names that are not in the Bible, they get them from hell. That's how we know that these people have something, something. Let's read verse 11. And to him they had regard, because that of long time he had bewitched them and with sorceries. We see that the witches can have an influence over people. They had regard for that man. Because he had been bewitching them. People respect them because they, he has been bewitching them. So people don't want to talk so much. What are we seeing? We are seeing 
um, fear. Fear. Because we don't operate in fear. We operate in respect and love of God and his servants. But these people manipulate you with fear. What is witchcraft? Actually, witchcraft is mental manipulation. It is mental manipulation. It is someone trying to manipulate to manipulate your thinking. So that you don't think straight. You think according to a certain style, a certain design. There is a way somebody wants you to think. So they manipulate your mind. Are we going to fight that demon today in Jesus' name? Amen. That's deep as off. And when they believed, look at this verse 11. To him they had regard because of the many uh, uh, bewitched them with sorceries, verse 12. But when they believed Philip, look at that, preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. So there were many people who were bewitched. But when Philip the evangelist came, they believed him. We are going to see why they believed him. They did not believe him because he was preaching. We are going to see. Now look at 13. Verse 13. Then Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip. And wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. That is what brought the witch to the church. The signs Philip was performing. Philip was performing signs and miracles and wonders. That is why the, the sorcerer converted. But then we are going to see another character that witches can pretend they are saved. <laughs> they can publicly confess they are saved. But we are going to see down here that man was not born again. We will see here that that man was held by witchcraft that he cannot publicly leave it. My God. The man pretends, and even he is baptized. So maybe he was called now Simeon. Maybe he was given another name. Maybe he was called Simon Peter. You don't know. Maybe his name became Simon Peter after baptism. <laughs> because he was baptized. The, the sorcerer was baptized by a, an evangelist. So they can come to church. They can hold the Bible, which is which is are not black, very and very tall and very ugly. No, they can wear their suits like Simeon and get born again and baptize, get baptized and convert to Christianity but it is for a short time because we are going to see now the time for Philip is over. Let's see uh, the introduction of Apostle Peter. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem and at Samaria and received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter. Now we see the introduction of Peter and John. We are going to see why they came. <laughs> we are going to see who, when they were come down, who is this? Peter and John prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Do you realize that when an evangelist preached, he did not preach the uh, Holy Ghost, he did not release the Holy Ghost on them. So the church was lacking something. Now Peter came and they prayed for them to receive the Holy Spirit. That is why Peter came. That's why you left where you are and came because they told you to get born again, but they did not give you the Holy Spirit. That's why you are here. Amen. Yeah, you came because there is something you are lacking wherever you are. Yeah. And we pray that you get it in Jesus' name. Amen. Can we keep reading? For as yet he was falling upon none of them. Who is that? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit had not fallen. You remember we said the Holy Spirit can fall. Remember? Mm -hmm. Remember we said that the Holy Spirit can fall on people? Yes. Now the Bible is saying here the Holy Spirit are not falling on one of them. <laughs> Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. They were baptized. But they were, they were baptized with water. But they were not baptized with the Holy Spirit. Yes. That is powerful. Let's keep reading. Then... Read they their hands on them, and they receive the Holy Spirit. Peter and John are still doing something. 18. And when Simon saw that through the ring on of apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money. The man is still 
wicked. The man is still carrying the spirit of sorcery and witchcraft. So now he wants to buy a more greater power so that he can now go back. Can I say here that um, the witches can take what is yours? They can they can exchange, yeah. they yes. can take what is yours. Now the sorcerer Simon wants to take the power that is on Peter. He wants to buy it so that Peter can remain as a normal man and he carry the power away. It is called demonic exchange. If we are not careful to fight demonic exchange, your blessings can be exchanged. Amen. Verse 19. He came saying, Give me also this power that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Spirit. Do you think he wants to pray for people to receive the Holy Spirit? No. He wants the power to merchandise, power for trade. So that now, if I was able to do that, and my power was overcome by Philip, what if I get the anointing on Apostle Peter? I will give people sorcery and witchcraft, and they will give me more money. I am sure that is what this man is saying. Because of what comes after this, verse 20. Let's see what Peter told him. Let's look at Peter, because Peter, Peter, Peter is not a spiritual son. He's not a child. He's a very mature Christian, Peter, by now. Because for three and a half years, he sat under the Lord. So this man is, is, is mature. Apostle Peter is very mature and very sensitive to the Holy Spirit. So what he is going to tell this witch is what we shall tell the witch after this. <laughs> but say Peter unto him, the money, thy money perish with thee. Because thou hast thou hast the thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. You think that you can buy the gift of God with money? Verse 21. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter. Look at that. You have no lot in this matter. For thy heart is not right in the sight of God. This is not Philip speaking. This is Peter speaking. That is why Peter has to leave Jerusalem and come to Samaria to give, to give a reinforcement on his brother Philip, who is now a bit weak. He has a lower rank in the spirit. He's not able to handle this. When somebody said, I want to get born again, a witch, he quickly prayed for salvation and baptized him. But when Peter comes, he realizes that you... Thou hast no part, no lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Peter realized that his heart, that the heart of a witch is not right before God. <laughs> 22. Repent. Look at this. Ah. 22. Repent therefore for, thy, for this thy wickedness and pray God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. Peter tells the witch, now to repent. Forget the first salvation. Now, repent. <laughs> he does not ask, you are born again? Did Philip pray your hands on you? Yes. No, he does not believe in that salvation because this was blackmail on Philip. Yeah, this was blackmail on Philip. So, Apostle Peter says to him, repent. Maybe God may have mercy on you and forgive you of this wickedness. Jesus. Wow. Verse 23. For I perceive, look at this, Peter. I discern, I sense. For I perceive that thou art in the gar of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. I can sense that you are still held up in iniquity and bitterness. That you, that your power was taken away by my brother. Evangelist Philip. Aye, aye. You are still bitter that you your power was this this an art. It was this made dysfunctional by my brother. I can sense that you are still carrying some bitterness in your heart. I can tell. Yeah. And that your heart is full of iniquity. I can sense in my heart. I can sense. You have to have spiritual sensitivity to sense a witch. It's not a joke. What? They hide. My God, 24. Then answered Simon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me. Look at that. A very serious, dangerous, blackmailing statement. Then answered Simon and said to Peter, 
pray ye to the Lord for me that none of these things which you have spoken come upon me. Jesus. So the witch is telling Peter, no, you are saying I'm not saved. I am saved. Actually, I am, I am not what you are saying. Please pray to your God. That. <laughs> <laughs> so they want to engage you in prayer. So that you may pray and not think what you are saying is right. Again, he releases a statement to counter what Peter just said. Jesus. Pray to the, to the Lord so that whatever you have said shall not happen to me. And uh, if it was somebody who is not spiritual, if uh, anointed, uh, sensitive, he, should, he would have prayed for this man again. Man, man. Do you see, you can go and read from there, continuing, you realize Peter did not pray for that man. Imagine, the engagement stopped there. The engagement stopped. What? That is, have we seen Philip and Apostle Peter? Yes. Let's go to Apostle Paul and see what is happening. Oh my goodness. Let's go to Acts chapter 13, verse 6. The Bible says, And when they had gone through the isle unto Paphos, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Bar Jesus. Do you realize again? He has another title of a Christian, a Bar Jesus, a son of Jesus. Wow. But then we are going to realize in verse 7, which was with the deputy of the country, that's a senior man ranking, called Sergius Paulus, a prudent man, who called for Barnabas and said, a soul and desire to hear the word of God. There is a man of God who is not born again. His name is Sergius Paulus. He's a proconsul, he's a deputy, he is a man, a diplomatic man. He has heard about Paul and Barnabas and he wants to hear the word of God. And so he calls them to himself. To hear the word of God, but Elimas, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Did you realize that this man has a title, a funny title, Elimas? So it's not by Jesus, but Jesus is to confuse foolish Christians. <laughs> right. But he has his title, Elimas, that is what his name means. And his mission in there is to withstand Barnabas and Saul, who is called Paul. That is his mission. He is working in the same, same, he is actually working for the deputy, the dignitary. That is why he is there. He is a worker there. Possibly, he is a chief advisor of this man. It is very possible this is an advisor. And so he is there, but he is a sorcerer. He is a false prophet. So his mission is to withstand, is to protest, is to reject. Verse 9. Then Saul, who is called Paul, filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him. Saul looks at him. That his man is called Apostle Paul. Set his eyes on him. Don't fear them. Look at them. And said, O oh, full of all subtlety and all mischief, thou child of the devil, thou enemy of righteousness, Will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? Apostle Paul addresses this man on the face, looking at him without blinking, and says, You are a child of the devil. You are a child of the devil. Yeah, you are full of wickedness and iniquity. Wow! The man begins to address the witch. Yeah. You are full of all mischief. You are subtle. You are cunning. You are so crafty that your name is by Jesus, but you have another title, Elimas. You have a name to confuse us, but I'm not the kind of a man you can confuse. I know you are a child of the devil. Yeah. Jesus. Do you think Apostle Paul was being arrogant and wicked? No. He was full. He was. He was full of the Holy Spirit. If you are full of the Holy Spirit, you look at them and address them and contact.
talk to them and speak to them some difficult word, hard things. Look at this verse in the ring. And now the man continues to speak, Apostle Paul. Did you realize that Barnabas is not speaking? He has a lower rank. That's why he can't talk. You allow somebody who has a higher rank to speak on your behalf. So Barnabas is quiet. Paul is the one speaking. The other side we saw evangelist is quiet. Apostle Peter speaks. You must allow a man of higher authority to help you deal with witches. So it is Apostle Paul speaking. This is what he says in verse 11. And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, and thou shalt be bright. Not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on his on him a mist and a darkness. And he went about seeking someone to read him by the way. The man called Apostle Paul for him to execute the mission, released a judgment on Elimas. Now, why, why can't the Paul continue to, why can't the Paul say, uh, this is what you are going to do, Elimas, just, just give us time. I'm, I'm having some time with the, the big man, with the boss. Can you give us some time I talk? Which is, you don't beg them. They don't understand the language of begging. You command. You command them. Amen. It is now that he releases judgment on this man and says to him, Elimas, for now, you will not see the son of the, the, the right of the son for a season. Yeah. So that's how I am able to preach. I will be able to preach when you are bright. And the Bible says, and mist came upon his eyes. And he started looking for someone to help him by the way, to get the way, to get, to get, to get the way. Yeah. Already he became bright. So he can't concentrate on with the holding and protesting against the, 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 the Sagias Pauras, the man that wants to hear the word of God. Because he is blind. Send them brightness, my friend. Send, blindness. Send them brightness. Release judgment on them in the name of Jesus. When this happened, verse 12, then the deputy, when he saw what was done, Believed, be astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. My God. That is a mission that the witch wants to stop. Every time the witch will want to stop salvation and conversion. Huh? The witch does not want people getting saved. Yes. Now, I want to challenge you so that now you will pray with an understanding. That the witch does not want you to get saved. The witch, the sorcerer, the false prophet does not want you to convert and to be a strong person. So when the Sajas powers, the proconsul, saw this, he was so afraid and believed. Do you want us to continue about that? The story is over. Apostle Paul did not pray for this man. We are not told. The story is over. He went to something else. So let's also go to something else. <laughs> he in Acts chapter 16. <laughs> let's go to something else. <laughs> because the story is over like that. When the guy is born again, that guy is bright. We are not told that he went back to pray for him. Now that uh, the man is born again, uh, he now rests. Father, give him sight. He did. Don't be confused by devils. Don't. Let's read something else. Acts 16, 16. It came to pass as we went to prayer. Are you realizing that you are? It is every time you rise up to stand to go somewhere to do the work of God, yeah. you are encountered by the, by the witch. Now, it came to pass as we went to prayer. Now, this writer is Rook and he's saying about the company of people they were with. Apostle Paul is one of them. So, when we rose up to go to pray, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us which brought her masters much gain, that is money, by soul say. We are seeing Apostle Paul and his team, they are going for a mission. Uh -huh. And actually they are going to pray, then after this they are going to engage in a missionary journey, and then there is a small girl who has the spirit of divination. It is Rook who tells us, but the, the girl was hiding. We are going to see. 
He was high, she was hiding because she was telling the men of God some good things. But the Bible tells us it was a spirit of divination. What is the spirit of divination? Spirit of divination is the opposite of the spirit of prophecy. <laughs> divination is the opposite of prophecy. When I stand here, I prophesy to you. When I stand here, the Lord can show me what is happening with you and I can tell you exactly what is happening. Yes. That is the spirit of prophecy and the spirit of the wand of the gift of the wand of knowledge, wisdom, and now that those are the gifts of speech and revelation. So the counter of the gifts of God of revelation is divination. divination. Now let's read and see. Uh, let's read to verse 17. The same girl, this damsel, followed Paul and us as is Peter, I mean the Rook and the, the company, and Christ saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. Are you realizing that she is speaking the right, the truth? She's actually saying the truth. She's speaking the truth. So we don't believe anybody because he tell he told us the truth. Yeah. I can see you are a mighty woman of God. It's not a mass that I believe you because you are telling me the truth. Yeah. I can see your name begins with A and ends with W. Is it true? It may be true, but I don't believe you because you told me about my my day, my birthday. I can see your birthday is 7th of October. 7th of October is your birthday? Am I right? No, tell, tell us. Tell us. No, it is true. Not at all. Can, can you give the mic? Give the mic. Is that true? Were you here before? No. Did, did you tell me no? How did I know? He wants you to prove that he is a man of God, but he is not a man of God. He could be carrying the spirit of divination. Because this guy is speaking about the man of God, Apostle Paul, and says, these are great men of God. They carry the message of salvation of souls, which is true, but under the spirit of divination. Powerful. Verse 18. This she did for many days, but Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that self same power. Wow. Apostle Paul, full of the Holy Spirit. He was so much grieved that this man is telling us, this guy is telling us the truth. You should be grieved with now. Which is telling you the truth? The, the witch will tell you the truth. But you should be grieved. He was so grieved. Why? Anything that causes grief in your life is not from God. Amen. Yeah. We may be, because somebody may be telling you a good thing. Something to excite you. But instead you are not excited. You are grieved. I don't know whether you are making sense. And I don't know whether, I hope you are understanding that somebody can tell you something good and then you are grieved instead. Yeah. Instead of being happy. It they tell us that that is a spirit of divination working in this man. Because every information we receive from God is to encourage, to comfort, to exhort. Yeah, that is the message of God. So you should not be grieved by what somebody is saying about you, even if it is true. He was grieved and he cast out the spirit. They is, use evil spirit. Come out of this girl. The spirit left that girl that hour. And when the master saw that the hope of gains was gone in verses 19, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace and to the rulers. They now arrest Paul and, and Silas because they are casting out devils. When we cast out the devils, we are going to be at rogue heads with some people who are gaining some money from the spirit of divination and brought them into the magistrate saying these men being Jews do exceedingly trouble our city verse 21 and teach customs which are not lawful uh, for us to receive neither to observe their where is this all coming from from the witch from the people that are gaining from the divination of the God so they are able to um, bring people together and to tell them we must send these guys away 
being Romans, verse 22. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. Paul and Silas are beaten. And they had read many stripes upon them. They cast them into prison, chanting the jailers to keep them safely, who, having received such a charge, thrust them in the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God and pray and, and the prisoners hand them. Now that's a which he has caused Apostle Paul and Silas to be cast in the prison. Imagine. So they have the ability to, to, to mobilize people against you. Uh -huh. Wow, they mobilize the entire city against two men that were God. Amen. Jesus. Praise God. Amen. 26. And suddenly there was an earthquake. As the men continued to serve the Lord, there was a breakthrough for them. If you continue to resist, there shall be a breakthrough. Amen. 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 Now, let's see something. I have given you three mighty stories of the, the, the witches and sorcerers in the book of Acts. So let's see. Um, what should you know about sorcerers? Now this is what you need to write. Some 10 things you need to know about sorcerers. Witches, false prophets, all those evil forces of darkness against you. You need to know 10 things that are written down or even more. But one of them is that they can pose as true believers but are pretenders. That's number one. Witches can pretend that they are true believers but they are, they are not. So, next time, don't go looking for witches outside the church. They can be in the church. Wow. They can preach. Witches can preach. Witches can teach you Bible study. Witches can prophesy. Wow. We realize that that man got saved, got converted, and got baptized. So, do you think after baptism he went to the shrine? After baptism he went to church. <laughs> and he was sitting in the church, but was still a witch. He's a pretender. So, <laughs> pre pre uh, witches can pretend that they are born again. They can pretend they are intercessors. May God open your eyes and mine as well. Yeah. So that you are prayer, your prayer partner is not a witch. <laughs> I have a, a, my girlfriend, we speak many things, my girlfriend, my chief girlfriend, oh my, this girl is so pretty, she's so humble, she's so cool, she's so calm, she's, she's just down to the earth, I tell her everything, she prays, we pray together, she's my prayer partner, may God open your eyes, because that person could be a witch. They don't come telling you that I am a witch and I will be with you if you joke. No. They come praying with you, smiling with you. Hallelujah. Say amen. Amen. Ah, uh, lift up your hands. Lord, open my eyes. Lord, open my eyes. Because Acts chapter 8, verse 13, the Simon himself believed also and he was baptized. The witch was baptized. Can you, can you imagine baptizing a witch? Who? And you think that now you have a mighty breakthrough, but he's coming to capture you. But then thank God for that reinforcement of Apostle Peter, because this man would have brought down the ministry of Apostle and Evangelist Philip. Number two, they carry some funny titles, I told you, isn't it? Yes. They carry some funny titles, and also they have some funny chants, funny chants. Chants is something they keep repeating. Have you heard some preachers preaching and there are some things they keep repeating? Praise God. Funny chants. Funny chants. Yeah. They, they, they have a chant. They, they, there is something they say and all of you say, Ah! I, they are preaching. May the Lord bless you. Then they say something which everybody stands up to a proud statement. A chant. A chant. When they say something, everybody follows. And they keep repeating that one. That is their source of strength. Like we say, praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. That is our source of strength when we are preaching. We say praise the Lord. They are, they, instead of saying praise the Lord, they, they have another statement. They may say praise the Lord, but we do not know number one which Lord. And then they follow it with another chant. Another chant. They chant something. They, they, they something they say, and everybody they, they say everybody is following to follow after that statement also. That is their strong source of strength. Wow! Praise God. Amen. I, is somebody getting blessed? Amen. Greater one, my Lord, Princess, Master. Those are funny names. Number three, they can sense the move of God from a distance and try defiling and seducing a vessel. Wow, praise God. The witches can sense the move of God from a distance and try defiling and seducing the vessel of God. We see that from the word of God. And seducing the vessel of God. Some people are witches. Their work is to defile what you have started. May God help you. May God help you. May God help me. Witches can sense the move of God from a distance. And they come to you to defile you. Because when you are defiled, you cannot propagate the move of God. And that is what they hate. They fear the move of God. Witches will fear the move of God more than anything else because that is what can finish them within a second. The move of God. So when they sense that you are going to be carrying the move of God, they come in advance here and try to defile you and to seduce you to do something wrong so that the move of God can be stopped because we, because the move of God cannot be carried by dirty vessels. The power of God cannot be carried by dirty vessels. That the devil is aware, that the witches are aware, so they come to try to defile you so that the move of God you are preparing to propagate disappears. That is what they say, that something is about to happen in the life of a father spirit. He's about to experience a mighty breakthrough. So he comes now to try to get born again and be baptized, come very close to the man of God, and then defile him. Thank God. When the, uh, when the disciples in Jerusalem heard that the Lord had saved Samaritans, they said, Peter and John, they were sent down to go and give reinforcement to their brother. That is how Philip survived. My God. Praise God. Ah, let's give Jesus a hand. He has a Peter for you. He has a John for you. So that he may survive. Praise God. Amen. Number four. Their work is to block and to resist the move of God. Wow. This is something you need to know about the witches. That their work is to block and to resist the move of God. Many times we have felt it that the power of God wants to move, but there is something broken. Yeah. There is some resistance. Yeah. That is the power of witches. Yeah. Even in the crusade, when you hear the power of God wants to move, but there is a resistance, there is a hindrance, that's the power of a witch. Yeah. That witch is not far from you, it's just around the crusade yes. or around the church. That witch is not far from you. Cast out the spirit of the witch. Rebuke them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yeah, and then you still you begin to have some breakthrough. Wow, we will not be defiled. Amen. We will not be seduced. Amen. We want to carry the power of God. Amen. Jesus, praise God. Amen. But Erimas, Acts chapter thirteen, verse eight, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, we told them, seeking to turn away the deputy from faith. So, their work is to block the move of God. To block the move of God. Is to block the move of God. To resist the power of God completely. To resist. Because if that move is released, they are done. 
they are finished. The escape re- re- reading number five. Their work is to divert attention from the true God. You need to know that which is the, the work of a witch is to divert your attention. The attention from the true God. When the, a witch comes, his work is to divert. They, they don't want you to see God. They want you to see something funny. That is how we know when a church is worshipping God, when a church is not worshipping God. Yes. There may be what they think is man- manifestation of the Spirit of God, but we can tell because all the cameras point to the power that is in this man and not on Jesus. Uh-huh. That's how we know that that is a false prophet. <laughs> because they divert attention. That is why many preachers are speaking to demons. Of course, not all of them. I'm saying some preachers. Pre- they speak to demons. What is your name? Where did you come from? How many are you? Are you black or red? Did you put sickness here? All that is to divert attention from the true God. So all the eyes want to hear. Who is this? The princess. My name is Lucifer. I am the Lucifer. It is to divert attention so that everybody looks at the camera and screams to see. What? This is how Lucifer looks like. I am Lucifer. This is how Lucifer looks like. Wow. Let's look and see. They forget Jesus. They see Lucifer. Lucifer, come out. Lucifer, come out. Run down. Fall down. Lucifer. Then everybody is watching the screen. What is happening to Lucifer? But it's a diversionary tactic of the enemy. When we come to church, we need to be focused on Jesus. Yeah. We need our focus on Jesus. Attention. It is our attention that Jesus needs. Uh-huh. That is why Peter looks at that man that was crippled and says, look at us. The attention should come out of money and come to the man of God so that he can give you the next command from the Lord. Yeah. And Peter, straight away, when this man looks, he realizes all their attention, not only for the cripple, but everybody around there now, the attention was on Peter. And Peter quickly said, Silver and gold have I none, but what I have I given to you in the name of Jesus. Took the attention, take it back to Jesus. I command you to rise up and go in the name of Jesus Christ. And the cripple man rose up. The attention quickly turns from Peter and is taken back to Jesus. Who does the miracle? Where is the attention? Their work is to divert attention. Next, all great men of God were countered by witches. That is something you must know. That if you are serious, you will be countered by witches. All great men were countered by witches. You will have to fight a battle with the witches and overcome it in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Moses, Joshua, Elijah. Elijah, everybody was counted by witches apart from Samson. <laughs> Samson did not fight witches. He, was, he, he already was compromised. So there is no need to fight with witches. So there is no witch to fight with Samson because Samson already has already Compromise. When you compromise, there are battles you don't fight. That's why people are finding it very hard to say to stay in a church where Jesus is preached. Because there is no they, they are not able to exalt themselves. Oh. And they are facing out of battles when they worship the true God. We are ready for this battle. Yeah. We will not leave. We will not, we will not divert. We will not we will not bow down to the kingdom of Satan because of pressure. We will keep on. Because after this, we are going to see what is going to happen. Amen. After this. Amen. These are things you need to know. Number next, seven. A higher rank is necessary to counter witches. That is something you need to know about witches. Uh-uh. Most of the times, you just allow that a higher rank comes to give you reinforcement. 
Praise the Lord. Amen. Look for Peter. Look for John. Let them help you. A higher rank is always necessary. When the girl followed Apostle Paul and Akina Rook and Akina Cyrus, who spoke? Who spoke? Apostle Paul. Yeah. Why did the Cyrus speak? You need to know when you can be able to address the devil and or not. If you can't, please give room to Apostle Paul to speak on your behalf. That's why he is there. Wow. <laughs> A higher rank is necessary to counter witches. Look at 8.14 Acts. Now, when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John. I have explained that. that Peter and John left Jerusalem, dropped down to Samaria to go and help the man of God. Number eight. Don't be ignorant. Witches can be intelligent. Isn't that nice for you to know? Don't be ignorant. Witches can be very intelligent. Especially these last days. Witches are not now way, uh, walking barefoot. No. <laughs> now witches are driving. You're right. Now witches are living in mansions. You're right. They don't live in shanties anymore. They don't live in the ghetto anymore. Big witches, actually big witches live in mansions. Yeah, they drive big cars. Do not be ignorant. ignorant. Witches can be extremely intelligent. So seek information. Look at Acts chapter 19, verses 19. Many of them also which used curious acts brought their books together and burned them before all men and they counted the price of them and found it was 50,000 pieces of silver. That's a very powerful statement for you to know that they had books worth 50,000 pieces of silver. Books. Yeah. <laughs> Those are mighty libraries to read, to study. But then when the man of God preached, they realized their power is under the power of this man of God. They brought the books and the evil paraphernalia for burning. But then the cost of the books was 50,000 shekels. Yeah, the books were, were millions and millions of money. Books. Books. <laughs> you don't have one book to read. You only have your Bible, which you take on Sunday morning. And then you go, put it in your drawer, and Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you have never seen your Bible, you trick it again on Sunday morning. That's the only book you have. These people had books worth 50,000 pieces of silver. 15,000 pieces of silver. So they submitted them for burning books. Books, books, curious as brought their books. They brought their books together and burned them. Evil paraphernalia. They were, it was burned at the books. Say books. Books. Not book. Books. Many books that they could study about witchcraft, sorcery, occult, stars. Yeah, how to read stars, how to steal stars, how to uh, palm reading. They, they, they read, they study, they study, they study so much. They are very intelligent. That's why we want to teach people in the church to have knowledge against the witches because they can be extremely intelligent. They have read, they have books worth 50,000 pieces of silver. That's a lot of money just for books. They invest in knowledge so that they can fight the church. They can fight a man of God who is ignorant. They can fight a man who does not pray. They can fight against a man who does not read, who has no information. So don't, don't, don't attack witches in, from an ignorant position. Have some knowledge. Somebody tried to attack witches from a very ignorant position and the witches took them and cut 
them into pieces and, and injured them because they did not have information. The seven sons of Kepha, they said, we cast you out in the name of Paul, in the name of Paul, in the name of the name of Jesus, in the name of... They don't have any clue. They are trying to know which, how do we cast the devil in the name of Paul, that Jesus, that Jesus Paul. Uh, what is going on? <laughs> Demons realize they are confused. <laughs> Decided on them, tearing their pieces, their clothes, and they ran, the Bible says, they ran away naked. Because they came to attack demons from a, knowledge, from a level of lack of knowledge. Illiterate. You are, you are so spiritually illiterate. You don't know the word of God. You don't have a single verse against the enemy. You don't. So the devil has been reading the Bible before the world was created. Because the devil started reading the Bible while he was in heaven. That's when he started reading the Bible. Yeah. And it is why he was reading the Bible, he realized the Lord has too much power. This man has a lot of power. Yeah. And it is because of where he is sitting. If I can manage, people came on him. And he realized, I, he said to his heart, if I will, if I, I will, I will, I will. I will five times. He said in Ezekiel, I will, I will. And that's what was, I will, I will, I will remove this man and take this chair. Right. I will take this position. Evil was found in him. This man started reading and studying the Bible of King James many, many years ago. You are here, you don't read your Bible, you don't pray, and you want to overthrow the kingdom of darkness. I want to submit to you that you need to give yourself to study. Number nine, upon being identified, they can retaliate. <laughs> upon being identified, witches can retaliate. They can fight back. Witches can fight back. If you identify them, they can fight back. They can fight back. Wow. I hope I am giving you some nice information that will help you. If you identify them, they can retaliate. They can fight back. Yeah. When the girl was identifying that she was not carrying the spirit of God, but the spirit of divination, they took Paul and they put them in prison. Yeah. They can retaliate. So they can, they can want to give you a sickness. They can want to fight back. A demon, a witch can want to fight back. Wow. A witch can want to retaliate. Now that you have known I'm a witch, let me show you what kind of metal I am made of. Yeah, now that you know, I have nothing to hide now. Let me show you. And he wants to beat you. Cast them out again. Keep rebu rebuking them in the name of Jesus. They will be powerless. Don't be afraid of demons. I will show you. Mm. Number 10. Overcoming them brings breakthrough. You need to know that every time you overcome a witch, you receive breakthrough. <laughs> because the witch is coming to withhold you or to resist you or to oppose you from receiving breakthrough. When you overcome the witch, you receive a breakthrough. That is true. That is true. That is true. We have won the battle. We are now waiting to receive the crown. Amen. Yeah. If you will win, there is a breakthrough for you. If you will win over a witch, there is a breakthrough for you. Ah, yeah. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. We are going to overcome them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Totally finish them. My God. And suddenly in Acts chapter 16, let's, let's read. Overcoming them brings breakthrough. Acts 13, 12. Then the deputy, when he saw that what, had, what was done, believed, being astonished at the doctrine of God. The man got saved. It's a mighty breakthrough. That uh, uh, a, dig a government dignitary can get saved in your meeting. Amen. Wow, it is a good thing. 
It is a good thing while we are preaching in the crusade. One of the men that want to give their life to Christ is the chief, the area chief. Wow, I want to get born again. It is a blessing when you are preaching and the deputy president stands up to give their life to Christ. What do you think? <laughs> this deputy was converted by the man of God, Paul, when he overcame the witch, Remus. Acts 16, 25. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and every man, one's bands were burned. Everyone, every one's bands were loosed. You see, there's a breakthrough for many people. Many people, many people receive a breakthrough. Yeah, when you overcome the witch, the, 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 the foundations are shaken. When you overcome the, the witch, the foundations are shaken. Amen. And there is an earthquake that brings down the prison where people are held. And immediately, all the doors begin to open. Now, big doors begin to open when you overcome a witch. Amen. Yeah, doors begin to open. Doors begin to open. Doors begin to open. Amen. I have no doubt that there are doors opening. Amen. These are doors opening. Amen. Yes. Every time you overcome a witch, doors open. <laughs> Until they, there is everybody that was bound in prison, their chains fall off. Breakthrough. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. So, what is the action against the witch? What action do we take against the witch? Praise God. Number one, <laughs> be extremely discernful of our witches. Now, be extremely discernful against witches. You must discern. That this man is a witch. You must desire. You must be extremely discernful, sensitive that this woman is a witch. The woman we go to, we go with for charma. This woman is a witch. You must desire. You must desire. Because they hide. Have I showed you that they can hide in church? They can hide. So you must have extreme level, high levels of discernment so that you can know this is a witch. They hide, they put on suits, they come to church with big Bibles and you cannot think that this is a witch unless you have discernment. You must be extremely discernful of a witch. Yeah. Sometimes they speak in tongues more than you. You are right. Number two, you should know your position in God, your rank and your connections. You need to know your position in God, your rank and your connections. You need to know your position in God. Are you born again? Yeah. This is the action you take against the witches. You need to also know your rank and also you need to know your connections. Who are you connected with? Philip cannot come down because he is connected to Apostle Peter. Yeah, Apostle Peter. So, what are your connections? What is your connection? Oh my. Who are you connected to? That's powerful. Who are you connected to? <laughs> Silas is somewhere there. Somewhere there. Hiding. Yeah. Silas. <laughs> He's under the cover of Apostle Paul. He's there. He's connected to Paul, so he is enjoying some some security from demons. <laughs> May I be your security in Jesus' name? Amen. I cover you in the blood of Jesus. Amen. Yeah. When you get to heaven, you will say, Dad, I'm thankful that it is through you. I I I came to heaven. I arrived to heaven because of your company. Yeah. <laughs> There's a people who get to heaven and they say, I only miss heaven. Because I left church. Because the covering we give you here will help you to get to God. There are some people who will go to heaven and they will be told, this is not your place, your place in hell. And then they will realize that it is only one mistake they made. They left the cause of wrath. That was your cover up against witches so that you can see Jesus with your eyes. That is why the devil will fight with you to leave church. 
Yeah. Because the devil, for him to attack you, he needs to know your connections. Who are your connections? <laughs> who are your connections? I spoke to one man who is a policeman, and he said to me, it is very easy to track this man because I will just need to know who is close to him. Simple. The policemen know that your connections are very important. And so, in case I don't get this man, I will get the person that they speak with. It is very easy. And this person will tell us where this person is. Look at that. Intelligence. Very simple. Who are you connected to? Because your connections matter. There are some people you think they are very powerful, but it's because of their connections. <laughs> some people you think they are very anointed, but it's because of the person they are connected to. Uh, but look at the Father Frank, he is, he is connected to mighty mantles. Mighty, mighty mantles. So I am powerful, yes, but I'm all powerful because of the connection I have. Look at him, Cyrus. Enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy there. Yeah. One day they came to Jesus. They said to him, Why are your people, why are your disciples not fasting? Yeah. Why? <laughs> Peter does not fast. John does not fast. Why? He says they can't fast when I'm here. I'm giving them a covering. Yeah. There's no need of them fasting. I'm here and I'm fasting for them. When I leave, they will fast. Did you see Peter praying and fasting? <laughs> Peter was praying every day. At 3 p.m. he is praying. Because Jesus left. <laughs> and John, because Jesus left. <laughs> there is a covering you can receive. And you don't pray a lot. <laughs> the man of God prays, and that I really enjoy. You, you, you are shocked why people are suffering. Why are people suffering? It's because of the covering. Your connections. Number three. What is your action against witchcraft? Rebuke them authoritatively. Now, that now we are beginning now to go to action. Action. Rebuke them authoritatively in the name of Jesus. When you know your rank, when you know your connection, when you know your position in God, rebuke the witch authoritatively. Rebuke them in the name of Jesus. Stand up and rebuke the devil in the name of Jesus. Rebuke that witch. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Paul says to this man, you will not be able to see the, the, the light of the sun for a season. Rebuke them authoritatively. My God. Number four, declare God's word against them powerfully and constantly. <laughs> declare God's word against them powerfully and constantly. Don't stop. Do not stop. Don't say one word and that's all. No. Keep speaking the word of God constantly and powerfully. Yeah. Jesus look at the devil said it is written. Yeah. The devil went to organize himself, came back again, shared Jesus it again, it is written. And he went and you know, organized himself again, came with a mightier temptation. Jesus look at it says, it is written. Three times Jesus said, it is written. And the Bible says, the devil left him for a season. <laughs> Keep declaring the word powerfully and constantly. Keep saying it. Keep saying it. It is written. I will be mighty in the hand. It is written. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. It is written. I'll be the head and not the chief. It is written. I'll be a leader and not a follower. It is written. I will go to make my name. It is written. It is written. Keep declaring it against the wish. Praise God. Amen. The devil hates you when you speak the word because he knows the word. It is his. When he came to Jesus, he said to him, It is written. But he quoted half scripture. Jesus released the full dose, saying, It is written, men shall not live on bread alone. Yeah. They risked the full dosage against Satan. The devil knew that was true. That <laughs> is true. I can't fight the word. The devil cannot fight against the, the word. You are right. He knows that the authority of a scripture is too powerful that he can't fight it. Release it. Against him. Amen. Number five, always exercise authority and dominion over witches. Always. Always exercise authority 
and dominion of our witches. Always, always, always. Yeah, exercise authority over demons and dominion, authority, dominion, authority, dominion, authority, dominion. Don't close your prayers with amen without biting some several witches. Dominate over some some witches in the name of Jesus. I dominate over you now in the name of Jesus. I step on your heads. I defeat you tonight. I overcome you in the name of Jesus. To dominate is to walk over. It is to walk over them. That is what it means to dominate. To dominate is to walk over them. It is the word of God that says, soon the Lord will crush Satan under your feet. Dominate over him because soon Jesus is going to put him under your feet. Dominate. Dominate over him. Dominate. Don't allow the devil to dominate. No. Dominate over the witch. Every time the witch tries to, to throw something, dominate over them by telling them it is written. Yeah, the word of God is against you. Dominate over the witch. Always. Listen. Don't give them your ears. Yeah. Apostle Paul did not allow the man to speak. He did not allow by Jesus to speak to him. He countered him very fast. Don't allow them to talk. Counter them. Dominate over them. Counter them. Overcome them in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. I don't want to speak with demons in church. I want to dominate over the demons. I was watching what was happening in Uganda yesterday. I did not allow any devil to speak. <laughs> no speaking. Don't speak in my meeting. Don't. Devils don't speak in you my meeting. You will not speak in my meeting and take the attention of them. No. You will not. I don't allow them time to talk. I dominate over them and finish their authority and powers. Dominate over demons. Dominate over witches. Dominate over sorcerers. Dominate. Step on their hands. That is the, that's the anointing you have. Amen. You have the anointing to step on the head of the witches. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Step on them and dominate on them. Wow. And also, do what? Exercise authority over them. Yes. Exercise. You are, your authority is too high over them. Exercise it. The devil knows the truth, but he will not live if you don't say it. He knows the truth. He knows he should not be attacking you. But unless you tell him, he can't leave you. My God. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. It is the same. It is the same case. If you are sick, the disease will not leave you because you know that the cure of this disease is is a pain killer. If I take augmenting, it will cure me against this fever. That knowledge cannot heal fever that you have. <laughs> Unless you it is true you have the key it is true the car is here it is true the car is fuel but the car cannot move until you exercise authority over the car Amen. by igniting it so that we move now the devil knows that you are a child of God he knows he is not a child of God you are a child of God that he knows pretty well but that will not make the devil live until you tell him that <laughs> yeah, you must you must tell him that truth. Let the devil know what you know. Yeah. Wow. Amen. <laughs> Let the devil know what you know. Amen. By you telling him. Yes. Yeah. Do you think Jesus could have defeated the devil by saying, You know what is written in the word of God? I cannot change stones into the No. And the devil knows that the word says a man cannot live on bread alone. That's what the devil knows, but until Jesus says it, it has no power. My God. You may know a lot of truth, but because you don't talk, and the devil is torturing you. Number, number six, regularly and spiritually resist the witch. Praise God. Regularly and spiritually. Resist the witch, and like his master, he will flee from you. <laughs> Regularly 
a spiritual resist the witch and he will free from you like his master. It is the word of God that says in James chapter 4 verse 7, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he will free from you. Yeah. If you resist the devil, he will free. I can tell you that if you resist the witch, he will free. He will free. <laughs> he will free. The witch will free. The witch will free from you. If you will keep resisting. Keep resisting him. Keep resisting. What does it mean to resist? It means to resist means to withstand. <laughs> to resist means to withstand. It means to refrain. It means to oppose. Keep opposing the witch. Yeah. Keep opposing the witch and he will free from him. If the devil can free, if we resist him, then the witch can free if you resist him. James chapter 4 verse 7. Yeah. <laughs> Are you happy today? Will you resist the devil this week? Will you resist the witch now? From now. From now, will you resist that sorcerer? Amen. Yeah, keep resisting them. Keep resisting. I oppose you. Nobody wants to be rejected all the time. So if you keep resisting the witch, one day he will free from you. Yeah. If the devil can free because he is resisted, how about the witch? The witch will free. The sorcerer will free. Reject. Will you oppose? Yes. Will you refrain? Yes. Will you withstand them? Yes. Keep rejecting, keep resisting, keep regularly and spiritually resist the witch and he will free. The devil wants to free. Praise God. Amen. Stand up on your feet. I want you to declare with me together in Jesus' name. And I want you to know that the battle against sorcerers has been won already through the undefeatable blood of Jesus Christ on the cross. Amen. Praise God. Amen. If the be hands and say the battle against sorcerers, the battle against sorcerers has been won already. Has been won already through the undefeatable blood. Through the undefeatable blood of Jesus Christ, of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. On the cross of Calvary. Praise God. Amen. I was writing the last statement which I received when I was almost starting, Amen. and I was. I wrote and said, God Himself will judge witches. Amen. You can put it down. God Himself will judge the witch. In Egypt, God judged the witch. God judged sorcerers. It is the business of God to judge the witch. It is the business of God to judge the sorcerer. It is His promise for you that one of these days, God is going to judge the sorcerer and the witch and you will see them defeated in the name of Jesus. Amen. God said to Moses, go there, for tonight there shall be cry. Today the angel of destruction is going to finish the first verse. God judge Pharaoh and every Egyptian for every first born of every house of the Egyptian died under the judgment of God. It is the plan of God to judge the witch. I have used judgment on every witch now. In the mighty name of Jesus, I wish judgment on the witches, judgment on sorcerers, judgment on devil worshippers. I wish judgment now. I wish judgment now. Receive judgment. Receive judgment. Receive judgment. Receive judgment. Hallelujah. Rakada baganda rabada.
Your word will come to pass. Your word must surely stand. Cause you are God, you're not a man.